In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, we do continue our look through the book of Daniel. And in looking through the, the book of Daniel, I do think that there's a couple things that we need to point out before we delve into this. This is Daniel in prayer. This is Daniel pouring out his heart to God and saying, Lord, Israel is in a bad situation. We've been in captivity almost my entire life. Something has to be done. But he also acknowledges that the something has to be done is contingent upon how Israel reacts to God. He's genuinely remorseful for the nation of Israel, and he wants them to go back to that promised land, but he realizes that the reason that they were in captivity in the first place is because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. And so, is he praying for change? Absolutely. Is he praying to return to the land that God promised them? Absolutely. But he realizes that they aren't there arbitrarily or because God got tired of protecting them. They're there because they didn't hold up their end of God's covenant. And we see this sort of expounded upon in Daniel 9, verses 15 through 16. And now, O Lord our God, who have brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and have made a name for yourself, as it is the day, we have sinned, we have been wicked. O Lord, in accordance with all your righteous acts, let now your anger and your wrath turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, for because of our sins and the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach to all those around us. There's a couple really important points here that Daniel is making. And I want to start out kind of with the last one. That he realizes that Israel has become a reproach to those around him. And I think what Daniel's doing, and this is something that is not that uncommon in the Psalms and not that uncommon in prayers that we see in the Old Testament, and we actually see this even from Moses, that they're appealing to the how other people around them are going to react. Now, Daniel fully acknowledges and talks about the reason Israel is in the mess that it is is because they refuse to do what God told them to do when he told them to do it. And he fully acknowledges that that was Israel's fault. It was not because God didn't keep his end of the bargain. He acknowledges that completely. But there's something else I want you to notice in this. That he's saying, Lord, even considering all of those things... Israel has become a problem for other nations. You see, Daniel understood the importance of Israel's role in that region in the world, and really to the world as a whole. Before the Christ, where the blood of Abraham and the promise that God made with Abraham had been extended to all nations, it was extended only to Israel. This was God's chosen special people that had a different relationship with him than every other nation around them. And other people were looking to Israel and saying, how's their God any different from our God? The God that we've got that, you know, looks like a has the torso of a man and the head of a crocodile or Baal or Molech or any of these other pagan gods, how's their God any different? They live just like we live. They're doing exactly the same thing we're doing. And you know what? They were right. That's what's so horrible about it, is that there were people in Israel worshiping other pagan gods. They were living just like the nations around them. They were ignoring the law of Moses. They weren't living out the covenant that they had done with God. And I think that's a powerful message for us as well. Aren't there people that say that about Christians? And to a degree, they're right. 
people that look at Christians that claim to be Christians and go to church but don't live it out in their daily life, that don't actually live the covenant, they don't actually live the lifestyle of a Christian and do what they're supposed to do. And people look at that and say, well, they're in the same position that I'm in. Now, it's a little different because in Daniel's day, these were mostly pagans saying, well, their God's no different than our God. Now what they're saying is, well, they have God and they have just as many problems as we do. And they seem to be in pretty much the same boat and react to it the same way we do. And they don't really live a lifestyle that's any different than mine. So why be a Christian? You see, Daniel understood that Israel's role as that beacon, that city set upon a hill that was supposed to be the shining example for everybody to look at. Other nations were supposed to look at Israel and say, oh my gosh, look at what living the way that God wants us to does for people. Look at how it changes people. Look at all the blessings that they have. Look at the protections that they have. Look at how they're much more joyful and content than the people in other nations. That was Israel's role, and they failed in that role. And Daniel understands that and acknowledges that and looks back and saying, we've become just as bad as every other nation. No, actually, we've become worse than every other nation because other nations were looking to us to see what does living like Yahweh, what is living like God look like? And they're saying, oh, just like we're living, so there's no reason to change. Other nations could use Israel at that point as an excuse to not change their ways. Because they saw that living the way that Israel's God wanted them to live, that really didn't do any good for them. That didn't do anything differently. Now, somebody that understood the law of Moses well would understand they're actually not living the way that God told them to live, and that's the reason they're being punished. But Daniel understood to most outsiders looking in that they wouldn't have made that nuance. They wouldn't have made that distinction between the two, and because of that, there had been a real problem there. And another thing, too, that I want to point out, Daniel, in talking about this, is that he calls back and hearkens back to the origin of Israel as a nation. Now, of course, that all started with Abraham, but it was really solidified with Moses, because at that point they were large enough to really be considered a nation. At that point, when they left Israel after, or sorry, they left Egypt after the 400 years of captivity, then they really were a nation, large enough to be considered a nation, and eventually came to the promised land where they had an established land to dwell in as well. The reason that Daniel hearkens back to this, the reason that he talks about God's special relationship with Israel and talks about how he brought them out of Egypt is he is praising him for that act and saying, that can happen again. That if Israel will just do what God tells them to do, if they will heed his words and obey his commands, that God certainly has the power to bring us back. God certainly has the power that if he wants to, he can bring us back to the nation of Israel and make us just as prosperous as we were in the days of Saul and David and Solomon and maybe even more so. If we will just do what God says, then he's going to uphold his end of the bargain and this captivity, this time of enslavement, will be over just like it was in Israel, or just like it was when we left Egypt. And so he's hearkening back to that and saying, God has done these wonderful things for us. We know that you've done these wonderful things for us. Please let that happen again. It really is a strong sentiment held by Daniel and I'm sure Israelites across the spectrum that when they saw this, this great time of distress and evil, that the ones that were faithful, the ones that really did care about doing what God said, they looked back at the time of Egypt and said, our God can do amazing things, and we will trust in him to do those again. That's exactly the same attitude that we as modern Christians should have. That we look back at the deeds of the Old Testament and the New as well and say, wow, my God, there is nothing that is off limits for him. And as a result, if we just do what he says, then he'll be on our side and there will really be nothing that can stand against us. That's the correct way to look at this. And we can look to Daniel as an example of that. Stay the course, friends. Daniel. 
Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.